Hello, today we will be going to discuss about design of tension member. In last few lectures, we have concentrated on design of connections. Basically, after design of connections, we will see different type of members where uh, in the industrial building or industrial uh, structures it is appearing is say tension member, compression member, tension member with bending, compression member with bending and also only bending means beam members. So, different type of members has to design uh, for the industrial building as a whole. So, today we will focus our lecture today onwards that different type of members. First we will start the tension members. We know tension members may develop in different type of industrial building structures. When earthquake load or wind load it coming into a high rise structure then column also sometimes faces tensile stresses. So, uh, in fact in truss, in roof uh, tension member develops. So, these are the type of tension member you can say one is wires and cables, another is rods and wires and single structural shapes and plates and built up sections. In discussion of this tension member we will see this term many times is coming which is called tie that which is carrying direct tension means only direct tension is carrying that type of member is called also tie. Now, let us see what type of tension member uh, we used to use in the industrial structures. Say first is the simplest one is the circular section. This type of rod or wire can be used for tension member. Another is say rectangular section. This is also one type of thing, but mostly use is we will see which is available in the code also that is the angle section. This is called angle section this angle section may be uh, with same length means this length may be same symmetric or may be different. These are defined like ISA Indian standard angle say 90 by 90 by say 8. So, what does it mean? That means, it is length, length and means the length of the arms are 90 and the thickness, this thickness is 8 mm. So, this way we can make or it may be like this ISA 90 by 60 by 8. That means, the larger length is 90 and say this is 60, this is 90 and thickness is 8, 8 mm. So, various type of uh, diamond means various type of members are available. Another members are that the angle may be connected back to back and can be used say like this. That means, it depends on the requirement uh, what are the forces are coming and what are the requirement accordingly uh, we can make it. So, this angle has to be again uh, connected through rivet or bolts. This is one type of member tension member can be another is we can provide a plate here then can be joined with angle right. So, this is another type of where plates are given and angles are placed back to back and it has been connected through some rivet or bolt this is one type of. So, angle can be made with different combination and we can find out some built up sections. Another way can be made, say so, this is a plate and angles are make like this. So, which type of shape will go? It depends on the requirement and designers can choose accordingly. So, this is a plate which has been connected with two angles, two angles are connected through this plate. So, this is one type of uh, built up sections we can say. Another is we know that apart from angle section we know 
the channel section is also used for tension member so channel section right this is the flange width tf we used to call this is the flange thick, uh, wave thickness tw sorry this is flange thickness this is uh, wave thickness and flange width is this one right bf and this is the depth so when we call this it is like the ismc different type of things are there as you have discussed earlier in the very first class that ismc is 300 that means the depth is 300 and in sp66 you will get the other dimension when we are defining ismc 300 means that other dimensions like thickness of wave and flange thickness of uh, sorry width of uh, flange and other things can be found from the sp6 from the higher book and also other uh, dimensions like ixx iyy rxx ryy all the required uh, properties of the sections we can find out where is the center of gravity and uh, what is the rxs r y means radius of gyration minimum radius of gyration maximum radius of gyration so all these things we can be able to find out from the handbook that is sp6 1 1984 now some other section we can see say suppose two channel can be placed like this to find a greater area and radius of gyration so that the section can be made accordingly so this is another way we can represent right so two channels are placed and again we can provide some plate ept required suppose this section is not sufficient to carry the load then we can provide some extra plate here this also we can provide and we can make some connections right and accordingly the plates can be provided other way of orientation is the channels are placed back to back that is so like this right now these are connected through some gusset plate or some extra plate and these are bolted here or riveted here whether rivet joint or bolt joint we are going to do that is up to the designer's choice so this is another way to make some built up sections another way is that star angle that means i can make like this So, four angles are placed back to back and making as a star angle. So, this is one angle and this is another angle, this is another another. So, these are making star angle you can say means this is another type of built up section. Another built up sections can be made like this. So, four angles are placed and made so this is another type of built up section where this can be connected through bolted and riveted like this some extra plate has to provide this is another way so in this way different type of built up sections can be made as per the requirement of the sectional um, uh, properties means as per the requirement of the designers uh, means on the basis of the load and other things and of course as per the requirement of the architectural point of view so all these things we have to means take care while selecting the built up sections so these are the built up sections what i have discussed in this way another way of uh, making built up sections is like this that four angles are provided here with a gusset plate here so that is also in another way we can make it 
So, these are some uh, way of making um, built up sections. Now, we will see the properties of individual sections are available in the SP6, but when we are going to make some built up section, it is very difficult to means it is difficult to find the properties of all this, because we have to find out the equivalent area, we have to find out equivalent uh, moment of inertia in x direction, y direction, then radius of gyration, minimum radius of gyration, maximum radius of gyration, center of gravity, all these properties, many properties are there which we have to find out for the sake of design. So, what can be done? In general, we used to make uh, means we used to uh, advise our students that uh, they can make a small program means software they can make. Then uh, on that software they can just put this properties, this properties. So, means properties of this and the spacing etcetera all these things when they are giving uh, they can find out the um, sectional properties of the total built up section. So, if we can make a software or we can make a program for accounting the properties of built up section, then it will be better, it will be easier for a designer to choose a proper section, to choose a proper built up section. Because if we do not have the uh, uh, programming means software, then what will happen? Uh, designer will not uh, find easy to find out the uh, sectional property. So, whatever they have tried with one sectional property, if it comes ok, then they will not go for other sectional properties because of the means laborious work. So, if we have the uh, what you call this uh, software like things, then what will happen? Designer will try and uh, through trial and error method, they can find out the best option which is coming and which will be economic. Means, in optimized way, they can find out the best built up section for that particular um, load. So, uh, in that way, the uh, programming is very important. Next is we will discuss about the permissible stress. Now, for the uh, direct axial tension, uh, code has suggested that permissible stress can be taken as 0.6 Fy, where Fy is the minimum yield strength of steel in MPA and for mild steel, this uh, sigma at the permissible uh, stress in axial tension can be find out 0.6 into 250 as 150 MPA. So, as per the clause 4.1.1 of IS 81984, the permissible stress can be find out from this formula sigma at is equal to 0.6 Fy and uh, uh, on the basis of the type of steel, we can find out the sigma at value. So, sigma at value for uh, say in case of mild steel, we will be coming as 150 MPA. Now, allowable stress in axial tension for steel conforming to IS 226 1975 has been given in the table here. Say for different type of uh, section, the sigma at values are coming different. That means, say for plates, angles up to 20 uh, millimeter, this will become 150 mm Newton per millimeter square say plates, angles, T's, I beams, channels and flats. So, up to 20 mm diameter or thickness, this will be 150 mm. And if the diameter or thickness is in between 20 to 40 mm, then the sigma at value is reduced to 144 MPa. And if the thickness and diameter is over 40 mm, then this value is reduced to 130 MP, 138 MPa. That means, it is not only that 0.6 Fy, means as per the thickness or diameter of the section, this is going to reduce little bit. So, from 150 to 138, it has been reduced. And in case of bars, means round, square or hexagonal, up to 20 mm, this is 150 and over 20 mm, this has been, the code has suggested this as 144 MPa. So, while designing, we have to remember all these values. That means, it is not exactly 0.6 Fy. So, if the thickness is more or diameter is more, 
means more than 20 mm then it is going to reduce to 144 or 138 depending on the type of the section. Now another thing is the net area. What is net area? Suppose the, uh, an angle section we have say this is an angle section. Now what will be the net area? Net area depends on how many holes have been made. That means how it has been connected to the other sections. Suppose this is a plate and which is connected to the bolt or rivet. Then what is happen? The net area will be the total gross area minus the rivet hole and also it is not simply minus the rivet hole. Uh, we will we'll discuss in later that how the net area has to be calculated. It depends whether it is staggered or whether it is plain riveting, uh, how it has been riveted, whether it is riveted or welded and in which uh, part it has been whether back to back or single. So, on that it depends the net area. Net area is going to carry the tensile force. So, when gross area is there, so we have to find out the net area, then on that basis only we have to find out the tensile strength of the member. So, uh, we can say that when a tension member is joined to any other members by rivets, pins or holes, its gross construction area is reduced by holes of these fasteners. Hence, the tension members are designed for its net sectional area, not the gross sectional area. So, net sectional area let us calculate. Uh, first, let us see for the plate, net sectional area for plate. Say, if it is chain rivets in, in the plate section. So, what will happen? Means, if we see in the plan that one plate is like this. Now, one plate is having force P and another plate say this one. So, if it is chain riveting, then the weaker section will be through this or through this because this is the maximum reduction of the hole will be. So, net area will be basically B into T in this section if I see B into T minus N into D into T. Okay. B into T is the gross area in this where B is this one width of the plate this is B. So, B into T, T is thickness, thickness of the plate. So, B into 2 minus N into D into T, where D is the gross diameter of the um, rivet, not plate, this is rivet, rivet or bolt. And B is the width of plate and T is the thickness of plate. Then we can find out area net, means net area of the section will be B minus N D into T, which is coming from this equation. So, B minus N D into T, N is the number of rivets. So, in this way we can find out the net area. Now, if it is stagger or zigzag riveting, that means if the plate is like this, so suppose this is the plate, one plate is this, another plate is this. with an axial tension. Say now the rivets are placed in this way. So, what will happen? This is G gauge distance and this is called S the staggered pitch. So, if the staggered pitch is S and the gauge distance is G, then the as we know the weakest section will be through this because maximum reduction will be this, but because of this um, staggering, so one failure can happen like this. So, we have to calculate for this also. So, when it goes through this, what will happen? We will see that the in case of stagger riveting, the net cross sectional area will be increased by this A square t by 4 g where S is the stagger pitch and G is the gauge distance. So, deduction will be sum of sectional area of holes minus A square T by 4 G. So, what we are seeing that the, this plate can 
fell through say if I number this 1, 2, 3, 4. So, through 1, 2, 3, 4 it can fail this is chain repeating like or it can fail say 5, 6, 7 say through 5, 6, 7 also it can fail another option is that 1, 2, 6, 3, 4 1, 2, 6, 3, 4 when we are considering through this we have to consider this one in that case number of, of rivet will be 3 but the deduction of area has to be deduct from uh, by a square t by 4g also that means sum of sectional area that means here 3 into d into t minus a square t by 4g so deduction total deduction will be this so in this way we can calculate now another thing is that if the gauge distance are different that means suppose the plates are provided like this so forces are p this is one plate another plate is here and we have so this is one so this is one and this is another like this if it is so what will happen so chances of failure will be one so this is two and this three this is one another thing is like this it may fail that means one two so this is four five six seven so one two five this is say suppose eight eight seven so one two five seven five eight seven in this way also it can fail means this 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 is coming this like this so for this we have we are seeing that things are different this is say g1 and this is g2 so gauge distance are different and again this is say s2 and this is say s1 so staggered pitch distance also different so in that case net area can be calculated in this way a net will be t into b minus n d plus s1 square by 4 g1 plus s2 square by 4 g2 that means here b is this with the plate this is b and n will be in this case n will be 3 for this particular case right so the failure one chances of failure is like this it will go like this and this so in that case the we are reducing by n d but we have to add because of stagger we have to add this much s1 square by 4 g1 plus s2 square by 4 g2 now if it is n number of s1 square if we see then here again say n dash number is there say n double dash number is there so there also we can multiply this it depends on how many numbers are uh, reiterating means same same type of things are there right so net area in this way we can calculate from this formula that is t into b minus n d plus s1 square by 4 g1 plus s2 square by 4 g2 so in this way we can find out the net area now we will go through some example through which will be clear how to find out the net area of the section so suppose one example here we have that a plate of size of 20 by 1.5 m 1.5 centimeter is used as a tension member which can be connected to a gusset plate by the two alternative methods of repeating as shown in the figure below so i am going to draw the figure now now calculate the maximum tension that the plate can carry in both cases using 20 mm diameter of rivets assuming the permissible stress in plate as 150 mm so this has been given that permissible stress is 150 mm uh, sorry mpa and uh, rivet diameter is 20 mm and size of the plate is 200 by 15 millimeter or 20 by 1.5 centimeter so first two alternative arrangement has been given one alternative arrangement is like this say one plate is there 
this is 200 mm and thickness is 15 mm now this has been connected with this gusset plate and riveting is done like this that means chain riveting this is given as 60 mm and this is these are 50 60 60 and 50 that means pitch is 60 mm and edge distance is 50 mm so in this way it has been made that means this will be 50 plus 50 100 220 this total length is 220 another way of connections is given here that is zigzag riveting so in this case this is also 200 mm now so same thing one is connected through chain riveting another is connected through zigzag riveting so this is made like this so this distance has been given as 30 and 30 and these are given as this is 50 this is 50 this is 60 50 50 so this pitch distance has been given like this 50 50 and 60 so total is coming 260 here it is 220 here it is 260 mm so this is the way the riveting has been done so in the in both the cases we have to find out the strength of the member now let us see what is the strength of the member okay so in first case the weakest section will be say 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 because maximum deduction either 1 2 3 4 or through this or through this okay but first will be this one failure will be first this one 1 2 3 4 so for this the formula is that t into b minus nd now d is the gross diameter of the rivet that means 20 mm diameter has been used so 20 plus 1.5 this is the extra tolerance uh, which is coming 21.5 millimeter so net area is coming t into b minus nd so thickness is 15 mm which is of the plate thickness has been given this is 50 mm so thickness into b b is 200 thick, uh, width of the plate minus nd n is two number and d is this so after this we are getting 2355 millimeter square so maximum tension will be sigma a t into area sigma a t is the 150 mpa so this into this is coming 353.25 kilo newton so maximum tension we are going to get as 353.25 kilo newton for chain riveting now let us see for this that is for zigzag riveting or stagger stagger riveting huh? so in this case what will happen the net area first we have to see through 1 2 3 this is one possible case of uh, failure so for this t into b minus nd that is thickness is 15 b is 200 n is 1 this case so this will be coming 2677.5 millimeter square so net area along 1 2 3 say, will be 2677.5 millimeter square and similarly net area another way of failure is 1 2 6 7 in this way also it can fail right so net area along 1 2 6 7 will be t minus t into b minus nd plus square by 4g 
So, because of staggered repeating a square by 4 g is going to add. So, this will become 15 into sorry, 15 into this. So, this is coming 2667.5 millimeter square. So, this is another way we are going to calculate. Another way, so area net is going to be 2667.5 millimeter square, right. Another way of failure is 45267, that is 45267. So, this is another way it may fail 45267. So, this will be coming. like this t into b minus n d plus 2 into s square by 4 g because here 2 staggered repeat is there this is one this is another one. So, 2 into s square by 4 g. So, if we put the values then we will get 2657.5 millimeter square right. So, for 3 type of failure we have seen that different type of um, net cross section area we are going to get. So, the minimum one will be the strength of the plate which has to be calculated through that. Now, another is section 4567. So, when we are seeing 4567 say means it may failure like this also. So, in this case what will happen? If it has to fail, it has to fail through means we have to take care of this also, this whole also. So, this, this will not be critical as the strength of rivet 2 will be added to it. So, rivet 2 will be added to the strength of that, that is why this will not be critical. So, the critical section will be 45267, which is the minimum. The most critical section will be section 45267, that means this one. So, this is minimum, it is coming 2657.5 mm square, right. Now, so maximum tension the plate can carry will be sigma 80 into this by 1000 I am making for kilo newton making kilo newton. So, this is coming 398.6 kilo newton. So, when the riveting as done in terms of staggered riveting then we are going to get the strength of the plate as 398.6 kilo newton. If we remember the earlier one here we are going to get for the chain riveting this is 353.25 kilo newton. That means, for the same plate, if we go for with the same number of rivet, if we go for staggered riveting, the strength of plate will be more than the pitch riveting. In case of pitch riveting, what we have seen in this case that strength is 353, and if we do the staggered riveting, this is coming 398.6. So, in this way, we can see that how the riveting means uh, riveting combination is going to increase the strength of the plate, right. Now, another way is that, so far we have discussed about the plate, strength of plate. Now, if it is angle, what will be the net sectional area? Net sectional area can be made for single angle, for angle connected by one leg only, right. First, we will discuss about the single angle of the angle connected by one leg only. That means, So, this is the angle which is connected by one leg, right. This is the riveting. So, what will happen? As per the codal provision, the area net has been calculated as A1 plus K1 A2, right. Where a 1 is the area of the angle which means uh, arm which is connected to the plate and this is A 2 the unconnected leg. So, A 1 is the effective sectional area of the connected leg and A 2 is the effective sectional area of the unconnected leg right. So, net area can be calculated if it is joined like this then a 1 plus k 1 into a 2, where k 1 can be find out from this ratio 3 a 1 by 
3 a 1 plus a 2 right. So, when we are going to calculate the net sectional area of the angle we have to see which type of angle we are going to make means whether it is single angle or double angle. Now, in case of single angle whether it is connected by one leg only or two leg only. So, if it is connected by one leg only in case of single angle the net area will be a 1 plus k 1 a 2 where k 1 is equal to 3 a 1 by 3 a 1 plus a 2. So, in this way you can measure. Now, in case of angles back to back connected by one leg of each angle or one T connected by the flange of the T to the same side of the gusset plate, then how to calculate the net area. Let us see first how it is connected that if two angles say so this is one angle like this another angle is like this right. Now, these are connected back to back right ok. Now, this is gusset plate gusset plate. If so, then I can find out area net net area is equal to a 1 plus k 2 into a 2, where k 2 will be 5 a 1 by 5 a 1 plus a 2 5 a 1 plus a 2. This is called tacking rivet and these are the pair of angles right on same side. So, if the angles are connected like this then the net area of the section will be like this a net is equal to a 1 plus k 2 into a 2 where a 1 is the net section area of the connected leg of or flange of T. In case of T how, how would look like? So, this is the gusset plate and T is connected right. So, this is the T which is connected through its flange this is riveted and this is riveted. So, if it look like this also then the area net can be made through same formula that is a 1 plus k 2 into a 2, where k 2 is 5 a 1 by 5 a 1 plus a 2, where a 1 is the net sectional area of the connected leg or flange of T and a 2 is the area of the outstanding leg or wave of T, area of the outstanding leg or wave of T. So, in this way we can find out the net area. Another option is that double angle or T. In case of double angle or T means for double angles and T's placed back to back and connected to each side of gusset plate or to each side of roll sections. How it look like? Say if it is like this. Say suppose this is a gusset plate and this is connected like this. Right. So, now if it is connected back to back and these are the rivet right. Now, this is gusset plate and these are the pair of angle angles on both side of gusset plate. So, these two angles if it is connected through gusset plate on both side then the net area can be made simply by a gross minus a hole. A hole means deduct means area of the rivet due to means area of the hole due to rivet ok. Another is T if T joints are placed like this 
that means one T is placed in this way, another T is placed like this and it is debated. So, for this also the net area can be calculated from this formula that is a gross minus a whole. So, in this case a whole means 2 into d into t because 2 rivets are there 2 diameter of rivets are d and t is the thickness of the flange. So, if we have then I can find out net area. So, this is the way to calculate the net area for different type of sections if it is placed in different way. So, with this let us see let us go through some example. So, this example is a tie member which consists which consists of four ISA 200 by 200 by 12. So, 4 angle of 200 by 200 by 12 has been made as a built section, built up section as shown in figure. I am going to draw the figure. Assume diameter of rivet as 20 power driven soft rivet calculate tensile strength of the section if for different conditions we have to find out the tensile strength. No taking rivet are used. The taking rivets are done along A and B only. Three. Taking rivet is done along C and D only and next case is taking rivet is done along A, B, C and D. So, these are the four cases we have. Now, first let me draw the orientation of the sections. This is the gusset plate. Now, four angles are with same leg length. So, these are the four angles. Now, rebating has been done. One is here. There is here.
now this is say a b c d so this is basically 200 this is also 200 similarly this is 200 this is also 200 mm and this is gusset plate okay so now we have to find out the values so in case of solution first is if no tracking debate is done hmm? no tracking rivet is done all angles will act individually that means so a1 will be area of connected length that will be 12 into 200 minus 12 by 2 minus 21.5 because the thickness of the angle this angle section is basically this is ISA 200 by 200 by 12 so thickness is 12 so 12 this is thickness 200 minus 12 by 2 and one rivet is there so deduction due to hole will be 21.5 so a1 will become this 2070 millimeter square similarly a2 is the area of outstanding leg a2 is the area of outstanding leg so this will become 12 into 200 minus 12 by 2 there is no connections because of no tacking rivet is done so it will be this so this is coming 2328 millimeter square so now i can find out k1 k1 will be 3a1 by 3a1 plus a2 so this will become 3 into a1 is 2070 by 3 into 2070 plus 2328 so value of k1 will become 0.727 so now we can find out the net area net area will be net area a net which we define generally will be 4 into a1 plus k1 a2 4 angles are placed so that is why 4 has been multiplied so 4 into a1 plus k1 a2 so 4 into a1 is 2070 plus k1 is 0.727 into 2328 is a2 so these values are coming 15050 50 millimeter square so net effective area is going to have this so permissible tensile force permissible tensile force p will be sigma at which is 150 mpa so to make in kilo newton i am dividing 1000 150 50 so this will be the force so 2257.5 kilo newton so this is the permissible tensile force which we are going to get in case of no tacking rivet are used in case of no tacking rivet are used we are going to get the permissible load as 2257.5 kilo newton next we will go that if tack rivet is done along a and b second case tack rivet is done along a and b so second condition let us see so what will happen in this case angle will be acting in pairs on both sides of gusset plate so in this case if we see the angle will be acting pairs on both side of the gusset plate so this will be one and this will be another one so in this way we can find out so the area net will be net effective area will be gross area minus 
deduction of whole means minus whole area. So, this will be 4 into gross area is we know that is 4 6 6 1 this we are going to get from SP 6 SP 6 1 1964 from the handbook of SP 6 we will get the area of uh, angle ISA 200 by 200 by 12 is 4 6 6 1 right. So, minus whole area whole is 21.5 into 2 ok. So, from this I can find out the total area is 4 into 4403 that is 17612 millimeter square. So, allowable load tensile force will be 150 into 17612 that means 2441.8 into 10 cube Newton that means 2441.8 kilometer ok. So, if tack repeat is done along A and B we will get allowable tensile force as 2441.8 kilometer. So, this is another uh, orientation through which we are going to get the allowable load. Another condition is given means condition 3 that if tack riveting is done along C and D, if tack rivet is done along C and D. So, for this what will happen? Area net because angles on the same side of gusset will act in pair here angles on the same side of gusset will act in pair. So, area net will be 4 into A 1 plus K 2 into A 2 right where K 2 I can find out as 5 A 1 by 5 A 1 plus A 2. So, 5 into we have the area earlier we have calculated 2070 this area we have calculated earlier this is the area a 1 and a 2 we have calculated this. So, this 2 will be required here for calculating. So, 5 into 2070 plus 2328. So, this is becoming 0 0.816 thus net area will become uh, sorry 4 into 2070 plus K2 is 0 0.816 into A2, A2 is 2328. So, from this we can find out the net area as 1587.89 millimeter square. So, similarly the permissible load load will become 150 into the area 1587.59. So, this is coming 2381.8 10 cube Newton that means 2381.8 kilo Newton. So, if tacking rivet is done along C and D then the permissible load will become 2381.8 kilo Newton. The last condition is if tack rivet is done along A, B, C and D. If tack riveting tack rivet is done along A, B, C and D. Then what will happen? So, here what will happen? It will be exactly same as in case of case 2. A net will be same as for case 2, same as for case 2. So, permissible load will be in case 2, what was the permissible load? 2441.8 kilo newton. So, this will also will be 2441.8 kilo newton. So, 
if the tag rivet is done along A, B, C and D, it will be similar case to the case 2. So, the load will be also similar that means, P will become 2441.8 kN. So, in this way we can find out the strength of the member considering the net area. In this lecture what we have seen now then that how to calculate the net area for finding out the tensile strength of the member. The net area is depending on the type of connections, how it has been oriented, how it has been connected whether it is through gusset plate or simply it has been connected back to back, whether the longer leg is connected or the shorter leg is connected. So, depending on the different orientation, the code has given some formula through which we have calculated the net area and once we get the net area, we can find out the permissible strength of that member due to tension. Right? So, with this I like to conclude to this lecture, in le le next lecture we will see how to design the tension member. Thank you.